Hey everybody, Melon here. Today we are talking about the Keychron M3, or the Keychron M3W as I've been calling it. This is a 50 USD work hybrid mouse, I would call it, which is posting some really crazy specs. And overall, my experience has been actually really nice. I've actually been very impressed with this. For the, again, this being Keychron's second ever mouse, I'm very surprised with how good this product is. And it bodes very well for the future of Keychron mice if they decide to make more. But let's go ahead and get into the unboxing experience and kind of talk about what's included. Just a quick preface, this was not a review unit, nor was it supplied by Keychron Norris this video is sponsored by Keychron in any way, shape, or form. This was purchased with my own money. And again, even if it was sent by or supplied by a manufacturer of some sort, it would not affect my overall thoughts on the product. So in the box, you actually get us a lot of stuff, which is really nice to see. You get this very thick paracord cable. This is actually quite nice. Actually, it doesn't have a lot of rigidity, so I really wouldn't recommend using the mouse wired as this is going to drag in your mouse pad all over the place. But for charging and just very basic use, this is going to be completely fine. It also comes with two USB-C to A adapters. It also comes with a USB-A dongle and a USB-C dongle. If for whatever reason your cable gets bitten by your cat or stops working, you can simply just take the adapter, plug in your USB-C one, and boom, you're good to go. This is also really nice since this is a work play mouse. You can have this dongle at home for your gaming PC and you can have this one on your work laptop for go. For it being 50 USD, you don't really expect a lot, but there's actually a lot of surprises packed in this guy. The first one being on the bottom, this actually has a Vaxi Zowie style bottom control set, which is really nice. You can change your DPI and your report right here and this little rocker in the middle toggles between the 2.4 gigahertz connection and 5.1 bluetooth again the use case for this mouse it's a work play mouse so the bluetooth is primarily for work however i wouldn't recommend it for gaming obviously because of the latency and also it does drop your polling rate to 125 hertz and you cannot go above that so keep that in mind overall the m3w feels absolutely amazing in hand again for 50 usd i wasn't expecting a lot this thing is built like a rock i am death gripping this thing and it isn't budging at all there is no rattling of any kind it is built like a truck now the m3w is definitely a little heavier than you would expect this mouse is 79 grams honestly anything under 100 grams in my opinion is completely usable and the weight really didn't bother me too much weight balancing is also very solid i haven't had any issues it feels very solid in hand very well balanced you don't feel like you're kind of pulling one part of the mouse higher than the other one it just overall feels very well done the rgb actually looks really nice there's a little strip that kind of goes underneath here the m implementation looked really nice however I noticed that the RGB really really affected your battery life I just leave it off all the time however if you care about RGB it looks really nice the only other kind of notable thing about the QC I wanted to mention is that because of the design of this shell now I'm not sure if this is a Keychron made shell or if this is a uh, OEM shell I'm not 100% sure on that one however I have noticed that the way that the clicks are implemented the clicks clip into the shell right here and because of that the clicks have a bit of a wobble to them which is I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera but they definitely have a bit of a wobble now because the way they're like this the travel on the clicks does change a little bit so all the way back here there's very little post travel as opposed to up here there's a lot more so keep that in mind so the click feeling won't be completely consistent it's not noticeable in game it hasn't affected my performance for me someone who claws my mouse i click towards the front and they felt completely fine the coating is again it's 50 usd i'm not expecting a lot but the coating is very slippery it's just a very standard just hard plastic this is just my hands just dry and like there is very little grip here they did actually attempt to rectify this issue. On the very side of this mouth, there's these kind of weird hex designs. Again, they're covered by my grip tape here. The grip does not add a lot. Like, I'm rubbing my hand across this, and it feels almost identical to this. So it really doesn't do a lot. This is great if you have small to medium hands and you grip your mouse like this. But for bigger hands like myself, I hold my mouse like this, and I basically don't touch any of that hex design at all. If you use this for gaming and you have wettier hands or you live in a humid environment, you will have issues gripping this mouse. That is actually why I ended up putting grip tape of my own on this one because I struggle with gripping this one quite a bit. In a future version of the M3, I would definitely like to see them just get rid of this entirely because I would be more in favor of a consistent shape and feel with included grip tape over this because this just doesn't really work unfortunately. Another area I have to kind of question Keychron on is the description of the shape. Now on the box here you can see that it says ergonomic design which to me when I hear ergonomic design that means okay this is an ergonomic mouse with a tilt so it's more comfortable for a slanted grip. This is a sim mouse. This is not this this is not an ergo mouse in any way shape or form. This isn't even an ambi mouse. This is a sim mouse. You can argue like 
like, oh, because it has this kind of weird flare out to the back, it's more ergonomic for the hand. This is not, it's not an ergo mouse. This shape is actually really nice for a sim mouse. If it was tilted, it would probably be even better in my opinion. So that's an area I definitely have to criticize them because again, the marketing is kind of deceptive as to what you're actually getting out of the box. As long as you consider that this is a sim mouse, you'll be fine. If the box said, hey, this is a sim mouse, I would, wouldn't be mentioning this at all. I would just say, oh, it's an okay shape for a sim. But since they said it's an ergonomic mouse, I have to kind of clarify about that because again, it's a little, no, not entirely correct. Now the clicks for this guy are actually really good. They are using Kale 8.0 switches. They actually feel quite nice. I'll give you a little sound test here. Overall, they felt really nice. Now, again, as I mentioned before, the way the clicks are implemented to the shell, your pulse travel time will change a little bit depending on what you're clicking. That said though, even with this weird kind of issue with the wobble, I never clicked the mouse down and felt like I had a no reg or like the click didn't go through or whatever. So I have had zero issues with that. They definitely are a little on the heavier side. I would put them more at kind of like a Vaxi mouse in kind of terms of the click. They're not Steel Series level of heavy, but they're definitely a little heavier, but they're still quite stable, no issues. The side buttons also feel really nice. I'll give you a little sound test. I would probably say feel like if you click the main mouse here, they have about the same amount of post travel. They feel really good though, very clicky, very spammable, very little issues with the implementation. They felt great. The scroll wheel is also really nice, very silent. Does you don't get any kind of meat grinder zowie scroll wheel, which is nice to see. Very silent, has a nice little tactile hump for the scroll. The middle click, which I'll give you a sound test here. The middle click feels basically just like another side click, if that makes sense, maybe a little heavier. Uh, I'm not someone who really uses middle click that much, so it didn't really bother me too much. That said, I had no issues with implementation overall. A quick little note I wanted to make, by default, this mouse does have eight milliseconds debounce time on the main click. You are definitely gonna wanna change that. For sensor, again, this being a $50 USD mouse, you're not expecting a top of the line sensor, but this actually has a 33.95 in it, which I really wasn't expecting. Now, the implementation is actually really solid on this unit in particular. I've had no issues with desync or any kind of tracking loss at all again i'm running mine at 1600 dpi so i've had zero problems with that at all the sensor feels so good i continue to use this mouse over all my other mice that i have just because i love the sensor so much and i'm probably not going to switch off this mouse until i get another mouse with a 3395 and a quick little note here as i mentioned before the bluetooth connectivity will drop your reporting rate to 125 hertz so that's something to note on the 2.5 gigahertz connectivity you are capped at 1k polling rate so there is no 4k again it's a 50 dollar usd mouse it's not going to have 4k polling rate but that said, the implementation has been completely fine. Now, the battery life is another area where I had some conflicting information in regards to this mouse. On the Keychron website, it says the M3W has a battery life of 70 hours, and it doesn't specify the reporting rate or if whether RGB was on or not. But then on the box, it says that the battery life is 50 hours. So I don't know what the battery life actually is. And the software unfortunately does not tell you the exact battery life percentage, which is a little unfortunate. I believe that is being changed in a future update. The battery life in my experience has been pretty similar between the two TLDR. If you have the RGB on, you're gonna have to charge it a lot more every couple days. If you have the RGB off, you probably won't have to charge this guy more than once a week. Charging is gonna be handled by this USB-C port in the front. The charging is not fast by any means. You're not gonna get any kind of like fast charging on this guy, but it's completely fine. I would say you probably get about 25% charge in maybe 20, 30 minutes. Now that was on my little powered USB hub here, so your results may vary, but overall the battery life has been completely fine. Now an area I really have to give a lot of props to Keychron with is the software. The software is a very, very lightweight, very basic, but very useful utility. And the sense the M3 has onboard memory, you do not need to have the software running in the background all the time. The software, it has pretty much all the standard features you would expect. It has LOD adjustments. You can turn motion sync on and off, ripple. You can adjust the keybinds, adjust the RGB, all that stuff. And also, as of right now, there is no way to set keybinds on the actual key clicks right now. Um, now, I did reach out to Keychron. They said that will be coming in a newer version of the software coming at some point. Um, they didn't really specify when. It also looks like we are going to be getting a change because this mouse does run multiple profiles. So the work play hybrid that this mouse is really aimed at, having this middle button be able to switch between different profiles, such as work, editing, and play, which is a really nice feature. So that will be coming in the near future. I've been using this as my daily driver for about three weeks now. I've been using this for editing, all that stuff, and just having an ability to quickly change the profiles of uh, not using a software would be a really nice change. So overall, really good there. No problems with the software. Th it's hard to criticize this mouse because for 50 USD, this is a really, really solid mouse. Like I'm really impressed. But of course there are changes I would love to see, obviously. Now, again, first thing is gonna be this ergonomic thing. Again, ergonomic design. This is a sim mouse. This is not, this is not a 
Ergomouse of any way, shape, or form. I would love to see Keychron make an Ergomouse because, again, I think they'd actually be able to make a really nice product if it was an Ergo, but this is not an Ergo. This is a sim. Their marketing should 100% be updated to better reflect the shape because, again, it is very kind of deceptive of what you're getting. I understand they're justifying it with this bell shape at the bottom, but it, it this is not an Ergo Mouse. Another area what I think would be improved, as I mentioned before, is the textured kind of sides. These should just be removed in favor of a solid shell for the entire mouse and include grip tape uh, that would be a much better option i would also love to see an extra set of skates included as well that'd be a nice touch even if that increases the price of the mouse by 10 5 to 10 dollars i would still buy it just to have that extra value a mouse that did this that was very successful was the original pulse fire haste because that mouse came with grip tape and an extra set of ptfe skates that were very nice quality another part i would mention is the rgb again it's not really necessary and it does more harm than good for a work gaming mouse i would love to see the rgb removed and thus dropping the weight down a little bit that would be something i would like to see Melon from the future here. So I was getting some information off of Keychron's website for finishing up my review of the M3 and I stumbled upon um, something on there. There's another mouse coming out. There is a mouse called the M4, which is going to be releasing uh, later in this year. I believe it's coming late April 2023, which is basically the M3 with all of these suggestions I thought to make the mouse better implemented. Now we don't know what clicks we're using and we don't know what the bottom of design is. And we don't know if it's going to include grip tape and that kind of skates, but we do know it is going to be a lighter mouse coming in at 60 grams. It will be using a the same sensor and it's going to have a consistent solid shell design so no more of this hex design on the side so now that i know that the m4 exists it definitely changes my opinion of this mouse because i cannot recommend this mouse as a gaming mouse because again the m4 is just almost certainly going to be a lot better because it fixes a lot of the problems it has i will still say this is still a really solid just general work mouse like i really have enjoyed using this mouse i generally use an old steel series sensei 10 for my work and editing mouse but having a wireless mouse that's really good quality it has really good battery life of course with the RGB off has actually been really nice. This has actually been replacing my editing mouse and my work mouse entirely. So I can definitely recommend this as a work mouse. I cannot recommend it as a gaming mouse. If you care about gaming performance, I would definitely recommend for the M4 to come out and pick that one up. Speaking of, get subscribed so you don't miss my review of the M4 when it does release in late April. But again, if you're looking for a solid, well-built work mouse with multiple profiles and multiple connectivity options, this is probably the best option you can get on the market right now. I highly recommend this. Gaming, wait for the M4. But overall, I'm very happy with the M4 three and again i'm probably going to be still using it until i get another mouse with a 3395 in it and that is all my thoughts on the keychron m3 uh thank you very much for watching i hope that you found the review helpful if you did find it helpful considering uh, subscribing to the channel and uh, liking the videos and again as i said before be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss any of the future reviews and if you want to watch some other reviews i've done we have a review on the death v3 pro that came out a little while ago you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested but again thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace